Yeah, so the the track that I wrote isn't really my thoughts. It's just things that I've been taught over the decades that Yahusha reveals in his word about these pagan uh, festivals. And Paul even spoke about them. They're, they're shameful to even mention what they do in secret. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, you know, what do you hear and see the most? I mean, look at these tabloid magazines. Uh, they're talking about all this, the things that people do in secret, and they are shameful, and that's not something that we should be focusing on. But yet, what's in your face 24-7 out there? You know, the merchants, they're promoting the Christmas and the Bunny Rabbit Festival every year and all the other nonsense, and, you know, they keep it right in front of the people's eyes all the time. And, you know, with cell phone technology now, if, even if people mention something to one another when they got a phone in their pocket, the next thing you know, they're getting an email advertisement for that such thing. And it's like, you know, it's, it's a constant barrage of this, this uh, indoctrination, if you will, to keep people distracted from what they really should be doing. I mean, reading scripture. There was there's another book that you had here that... Uh, um, the last not to rain. and I was uh, looking through that this morning here, and uh, there was a, a page in there. I think it was page 19, and it, it basically is talking about the same thing that that we uh, we read here um, in this article that you sent. And uh, if we've got a minute, maybe I'll just read a little bit of that. Great. Okay, it's. Uh, uh, starts at the, about the two thirds of the way down, on, or a third of the way down on the page. Here it says, "Scripture calls itself the Kadab Amath, which is the Scripture of Truth." At Daniel ten twenty one. Now from it we learn we are delivered only by the blood of Yahusha, and no longer is animal blood used to temporarily cover our transgressions. Now, Daniel twelve tells us about the last days when the wise will lead many to uprightness. The messenger Michael tells Daniel to seal the book until the time of the end, and many will roam, and knowledge will increase. So we're now realizing those who teach us have put up a wall to keep us away from knowledge. Now, I just mentioned about that distraction and the indoctrination that's all around us. Now, during the Dark Ages, people were kept from learning anything except what the teaching authority wanted them to know. The slightest deviations in behavior or disrespect toward those of the first estate, which we know is clergy, were met with savage penalties. The age of information has arrived now, and we are able to communicate with one another without too many restrictions just yet. Of course, you know, they're trying to, they're trying to restrict the Internet and everything, so you kind of got to watch what you say on there. So the linchpin of all human history is just ahead for mankind when the reign of Yahushua begins and the reign of Babel, or the beast, falls. This change will come like a trap closing on a dumb animal. Now, ambassadors have been awakened to announce the coming of Yahushua to reign, and they are the Nazarim, the branches of his teaching, and those who guard the commandments of Yahuwah, you know, the legalists, the second exodus, the second exodus, will be a worldwide event. Remember, the first exodus happened over in Egypt. Well, this is going to be a grand thing. An assembly of Nazarene will be clothed in light when Yahushua appears in the space above us. And every eye will see him. Not just believers, non-believers, doubters, you know, people that are, you know, atheists and whatever. Every eye will see him. So, you know, Yeshayahu or Isaiah describes it for us in the 24th and 25th chapters. And that pretty much parallels Matthew 24. Um, Yahushua's arrival to reign will be to announce that Yahuwah is our deliverer. Now, I thought that was pretty, uh, it, it kind of kind of went right along with what we talked about here in that article that you said. So I thought maybe that, you know, reading that that kind of give people a little bit more information as they could, uh, you know, they could process. Uh, what do you think, Lou? I do. I think that the last Nazarim are roaming the earth right now. And mm -hmm. they're, they're teachers and they're getting them, their wedding garments unwrinkled, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we still have a ways to go, but 
as we get better and better, it's only through the power of the indwelling Yahushua spirit. The uh, little thing that I wanted to mention, you mentioned Yahshua Yahu, the one they call Isaiah or Isaiah. Mm -hmm. That prophet came, well, he was born like 700 BCE in that area, as was uh, Yermiyahu a little bit before him. And Daniel read Yermiyahu and found out how long they were going to be in captivity. Well, long before them, hundreds of years before Yermiyahu or Jeremiah, and hundreds of years before Yashiyahu, and hundreds of years before Daniel, there was a colony in what we call New Mexico now that carved a gate stone. And it's right behind me on this backdrop. Mm -hmm. And I've got these cards now that show, it's like a postcard, and it shows the same thing. And you can read the Hebrew. Well, this thing was carved before the prophets, Yashiyahu, Yermiyahu, Daniel, even were born. Hundreds of years. This thing was carved. It's the Ten mm -hmm. Commandments. And it's our way of living. It's the eternal covenant. And people need to wake up. And if knowledge is increasing, it's most important that they know the knowledge of the Ten Commandments. Well, basically, that's, that's the outline of how to live your life, is the Ten Commandments. Yeah. I mean, it covers everything. His name? Yeah. Don't bow to idols. Don't make them. And, uh, right, right. <laughs> sorry, right there. Uh, don't uh, destroy his name. And the translators have done such. Uh, they admit it in the prefaces of their bi of their B-I-B-L-E's. See, right. even the word B-I-B-L-E, it's not in the text, but it's the most known word referencing itself to the writings of the Creator. Well, that that's not good. That's a fertility deity. Right, yeah. What an abomination. Yeah, it is. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, when we when we read in Scripture about when you see, when you perceive, when you understand the abomination in the place that it shouldn't be, okay, um, that's also another aspect. Okay, you have these temples and all this stuff. you got that temple mount over there on that piece of real estate that has Yahuwah's name on it. So you have that big dumb dome over there. And there's a fight going on over that. Well, the abomination of desolation. When you see it, when you understand it, that's what that is. Okay? And then you, it's going to kind of open your eyes. And what we just talked about today, about these words. Okay? You're taking the word of Yahuwah, okay, which is the Kathavimah, the scripture of truth, and you're putting, you're stamping a title on that, on that book and calling it the name of a pagan fertility deity, isn't that also uh, the same type of thing? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's just it's just bad any way you look at it. It takes spiritual discernment to even pick up on what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely does. Yeah, because the people that Yahuwah is, his eyes are roaming to and fro on the earth, looking for anyone who understands and yeah. gets his perspective. That's what he means. And, th and there's very few, very few, if any, that really understand how he feels. And his wrath is burning. And it's Oh, uh, definitely. And, and, uh, and he made reference uh, to that, uh, Yahushua did when he was here among his followers. He says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find belief on the earth? Yeah, so I when, I read it, yeah. when I read scripture, that tells me that, you know, um, there's going to be very little genuine belief yeah. on this earth when he returns, in the time that he returns, in the last days. Yeah, he cursed the fig tree because he didn't see the seats, the, uh, right. the place right. where the blossoms are. And yeah. uh, he said, well, I don't see any obedience here, you know. I mean, even the seat seats that we wear, just a little mm -hmm. thread, a little purple thread with a little blue maybe um, on your belt loop. I mean, why can't you do that? What's wrong? It's just mm -hmm. a little, little thread. He just wants you to wear them to remind you of his Torah. But they don't want to obey the Torah. The mind of the flesh doesn't want to, nor can it. But yeah. if they obey him, the father will run to that prodigal son and say, he'll scoop him up off his feet and say, I can help you. You know. That's right. 
Yeah. That's right. You got to quit caring whether or not the older brother's going to be jealous. I mean, that's <laughs> the older brother's supposed to be jealous yeah. when he sees. And uh, it, 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 this, this, the thing I see, though, a lot of it is um, uh, it's the fear factor. Okay, they use it in everything, advertising, you know, uh, TV commercials, radio ads, all this stuff. The fear factor. Hurry, one day sale, offer ends soon, order now, call now, whatever. Okay, the fear factor. What about people who claim to follow the word, but yet when it comes to actually uh, having a physical uh, sign, like say the seat seats on your belt loop, uh, they're actually afraid of what other people might think because they stand out in a crowd. They're set apart, if you will. What are those people going to think, you know? So uh, it's, it's just a human thing about conformity. You know, people don't want to be different, that different from one another. They all want to eh, kind of be saying the same thing, sort of blend in, you know, don't be singled out. Well, are you ashamed of being a witness for your creator in whom you know his real name and what he wants of you? Are you ashamed of that? Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not either. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, uh, they, they roam the neighborhood. Here in a, in a couple of months, they're going to be uh, running out door to door with little children and the little ba- bags filled with candy. And they see a dark house here, and we say, uh, no, there's no candy here. And we put a sign up, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it says, there's no candy here. Halloween is idolatry. Absolutely, big time. Yeah, and I put the scriptures in there for the people that want to know, but mostly the secular world that's completely clueless. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're the ones that are sending their children out there, and they don't even know why. They just did it when they were children, see? And they've handed these things down. And like Yermayahu says, uh, you know, our fathers have inherited nothing but lies and futility. And there is no value in them. No. Um, the ends and of that's the, the, the yeah. thing with religion. Yeah. Religion is man-made. Yeah. You know, it's been handed down for generation after generation. And the end result is, you know, all around us here. And... Uh, People do because that's what they've been brought up with, and yet they just don't really know why. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've even seen that in some films that I've watched. You know, well, we've just always done it that way, you know, and we never questioned it. Why? You're supposed to question everything. You know, when the when you got people that are telling you things that, uh, you know, uh, prophesying, per se, like the Bereans, they listen to a bunch of people. But they checked the scriptures to see if what they were being told was even true. Yeah, and Paul said, test yourselves to see if you are in the belief. And belief, of course, is completed by obedience. Belief is obedience. Exactly. You can't just believe something in your head. You have to actually practice it in order to confirm and uh, and affirm what you believe. Otherwise, it's dead. Mm Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. So, you know, that's, uh, the Hebrew word is uh, uh, amuna, and there's also another word that kind of goes along with it. It's halak, or halaka. Walk. That's your walk. Yeah. You know, and it, we have a saying nowadays, you know, don't talk the talk if you ain't willing to walk the walk. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know. All right. Well, thanks, Dan. That was <laughs> that was okay. remarkable. And you can get uh, the last, last Nazarene uh, book at Amazon.com. Thanks for watching.